Here comes a quick demo of EasyETL. We start here in the welcome screen by launching the EasyETL workbench. Here I can create a new project, and I'm going to read a CSV file and then dump it to an XML file. So we'll just call the project csv.xml. Here in the simple assembly line view, I have a source, I have a target I can choose. Here is where the mapping of attributes will show up. And at the bottom, I've got information coming from the console. I can see the status of my development server, which is up and running for me, and my data collector. Start by selecting an input source. I'll choose File System Connector. And then we'll point this at tutorial files already found on your machine. So I'll go to the TDI install area. And you see that I can use both backslash and forward slash uh, in TDI on Windows. And then I choose the CSV parser. Once I've assigned the parser, I can then press the connect button. And TDI discovers the schema and shows me some sample values. And now we can see them in the input source, and they're mapped by default to my output. And I can test this by pressing the read and write next record, which transfers this job to the running test server and executes it. I now get information about my input and my output values, and the data collector that here shows me what information would go to my output once I've chosen a target. If I press run, it runs to completion, I get information here about the number of records that were read and written and any errors that occurred. Now if I go to my data collector, I can control A and then copy this information and paste it here into a text editor. It comes in CSV format in your copy buffer. At the top here of the data collector, I can set the size that I want if I'm going to collect more data. I'll need to set up the size of the, co the uh, data collector buffer. And I clear this out between runs as well. Here is a checkbox that allows me to apply transformations to my output. So I'm going to select this. I get a new column. And now I'm going to change the title. And I'm going to do that by returning by using the to uppercase function. If I press dot, I get code completion to uppercase. That's the one I want. I can evaluate it using any data that I've stepped through or run. This is what the result will look like. So now as we run this, we'll see that the target values here are uppercase. If we take a look at the output data collector, we see these values here as well. And now we've gotten an error. And that tells us that our mapping code is getting a, um, a script error at line 3, title is null. The problem is, for some of the data that I'm reading in, there is no title information coming in. This is an empty field in the input CSV. So I'm going to add a little bit of logic to check to make sure that title exists. So if it's null, I'm going to just return an empty string else we'll apply the uppercase function. And this looks to work just fine. And now in spite of the fact that information was missing, we're still getting a, a smooth run of our ETL job. Just copy this and paste that into our editor as well. I can also add additional attributes. So I'm right clicking here in the output data viewer. And we'll add an attribute called full name. By default, the transformation is just returning an empty string. And I'm going to change that to be the first name 
plus a space plus the last name. If I press control space, it gives me completion. I can start typing the first name plus space and then plus the last name. We evaluate that. It's working. We're ready to rerun our assembly line. Now that we have the information the way we want it, we can now assign an output and write this to a file. And then we run it again. Now I've actually written seven records, as I can see here. If we go now to C temp, we'll find our output file. And here's our data. And that concludes this first simple demo.